In today's video, I'll show you how to create a Node.js contact form, enable field validation, add recapture, and send emails. Let's jump right in. Hello, and welcome to MailTrap videos where we explore the world of emails. First, set the location where you want to generate the project and create a new Node.js directory. Open the newly generated folder and the terminal, and initialize the project with the npm init initialize command. Install the necessary dependencies, such as express.env and deep email validator. Then install nodemon package as the development dependency to automatically restart the server when you make changes to the code. Close the terminal. Now, let's start building the project structure. Create a public folder. Inside the public folder, create an app.js file for the JavaScript front end, contactform.html for the structure of the contact form, and style.css for styling. In the root directory, create the server.js file, which will be an entry point for the application, and the .env file, which will store environment variables. Let's configure our application. Open the package.json file, and change the entry point to server.js. Define the scripts that can be run using the npm run command, such as dev and start. I'll also remove the default test script, as I don't have any test cases. Save and close package.json. Let's head over to the server.js file. Load environment variables from a .env file. Then import express.js to handle requests, deep email validator to validate email addresses and path to handle file paths. Next, initialize an express application. Instruct the server to load the port from an environment variable or default to 3000 if not set. Define the middleware for static files and JSON parsing. Configure the route for serving the contact form. In my configuration, when a user visits the root URL, it sends the contact form.html file from the public directory. Next, create an async function to verify the recapture and pass a token as an input. This token is sent by the front end when the user completes the recapture challenge. The function fetches the secret key from the environment variables, which is required for verifying the recapture response. It constructs the verification URL for Google's recapture API sends a POST request, awaits the response, and converts the response from Google API into a JSON object. Finally, the function returns the verification result. With the recapture configured, I'll create an endpoint for form submission and sending an email. However, I'll show you how to send the emails later in the video. For now, I'll add validations. And while we're at it, hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications for more useful tutorials like this one. All right, back to the script. Create a post send email endpoint for processing contact form submissions and use async to await for recapture verification. Extract name, email, subject, message, and recapture token from the request body. Add validation to ensure all the required fields are provided, such as name, email, subject, message, and recapture token. If any field is missing, return HTTP 400 bad request with an error message. Call verify recapture, recapture token, to check the token with Google API and await for a verification result before continuing. Finally, add failed recapture verification handling. That completes server-side validation. Now, let's add email validation, which will return an error if the email is invalid. I'll also add a placeholder for email sending logic and start the server. Save the file. Open the contact form.html file to create the structure of the page. In the head section, load an external CSS file for styling. Connect to Google Fonts for the desired font. Use viewport meta tag to ensure responsive design. Add form title and import the Google Recapture API script. In the body section, wrap the form inside a form container for styling. Add form fields for name, email, subject, and message. Use gRecapture specifying a data site key to display Google Recapture 
and add a submit button labeled as send message. Finally, load a custom JavaScript file and save the script. Moving on to the styling. In the style.css, add CSS if you want your contact form to look more appealing. Now let's configure the app.js file. Start by selecting form elements such as input fields and text area from the document object model. Then add an event listener for form submission with an asynchronous arrow function that takes the event as a parameter. Use e.preventDefault to prevent the default form submission to handle it via JavaScript. Since I imported the recapture API inside our contact form HTML, I can now retrieve recapture response using grecapture.getResponse. Add a simple validation that will check if the recapture problem was solved and block form submission if the token is missing. Next, use form data constants to collect user input values into an object, including recapture token for backend verification. Send the form data to the backend, in this case, slash send email endpoint via a post request and convert the request body to JSON. Wait for the server response using the await function and convert it to JSON. Finally, let's add server response handling. If the response fails, for example, recapture validation error or missing fields, the user will receive an alert failed to send message. If the server returns success, an alert confirms the email was sent and the form is cleared. If the operation fails, operation failed error appears. In the catch block, catch any network issues or unexpected errors, log them in the console and show network error or cannot connect to server error to the user. The contact form is ready. Let's run the script and preview the contact form in the browser. Success message appeared, and you can see the contact form with simple styling and recapture. Now that the contact form is ready, it's time to add an email sending logic to it. I'll show you two methods, with MailTrap, Node.js SDK, and NodeMailer. Let's start with MailTrap SDK. Return to your code editor, open Terminal, and run npm i MailTrap to install the official client. Close the terminal and open the .env file to add the environment variables, such as port, MailTrap API token you should fetch from your MailTrap account, from and to email addresses, and recapture secret key. Save the file and go to server.js. First, import MailTrap. And find the email sending logic placeholder we added earlier. Delete the placeholder and start writing actual email sending logic. Create a new MailTrap client using an API token stored in MailTrap underscore token in .env and define the sender email and display name. In the try block, call the MailTrap API to send an email and define from, to, subject, and text fields. Using console.log, log success and send the JSON response if the email is successfully sent. In the catch block, log the errors to the console and respond with HTTP 500 and an error message to inform the user. That's it. Save the script and run it with npm run dev. To test the setup, open the contact form, fill it with sample data, complete recapture and click send message. You should receive a success message and the email with contact form details will appear in your inbox within seconds. Now, let's see how you can send emails from node.js contact form with NodeMailer. Open the code editor and install NodeMailer. Close the terminal and open the .env file. Add the configurations for port, SMTP host, SMTP port, SMTP user, SMTP pass, email from, email to, and recapture secret key. In this case, I'm using MailTrap SMTP server configuration, but you can use any SMTP server you want. Head over to the server.js file and import NodeMailer. In the email sending logic, remove the placeholder code. Create an SMTP transporter using NodeMailer. 
Configure authentication with environment variables for host, port, SMTP username, and SMTP password. Then, using mail options, set the sender, recipient, and reply to email addresses, and define the subject and message body dynamically from the request. Use the send mail function to send the email with the specified SMTP settings and mail options. Log the error to the console and return HTTP 500 with an error message if the error occurs. Log the response to the console and return HTTP 200 with a success message if the email is sent successfully. The script is ready. Let's run it and test the contact form. Once again, fill out the contact form with sample data, complete recapture challenge, and click the send message button. Success! The email with contact form details was sent and I received it in my inbox. That's all for today. Want to learn how to send emails in Node.js without a contact form? Watch our dedicated tutorial and I'll see you there.